Uh, hi guys, um, I would like to do a follow up of the SeaTech uh, car battery charger that I purchased two days ago. Um, I use it use this charger to charge my battery um, in my Ford Everest. Um, so far, it works. So this video, I will just try to um, present you while what, what I learned after using this charger. So let me first introduce you guys how to use this charger. So what you need to do, you first need to connect your battery, connect the uh, the clamps. I mean, those are uh, leads to the battery. The red is to the positive. The black is to the negative. So that's the first step. Okay. So probably you need to connect this one to the to the socket first. Okay. Then you connect the positive to the positive, negative to the negative. So only after doing that, then you try to insert the plug into the power socket. You should not insert the plug into the socket first without attaching the attaching the the test leads to the battery. So once once you connect everything, so you can select different mode. Um, initially, what I did, I just uh, start everything, and it auto automatically starts at this mode, which is a car, which is for car. And and what it does is that you will skip step number six. Number six is a recondition step. So you assume the battery is okay and you will skip step six. Okay. But what I found is, um, I don't know whether that's the case or not. Um, so after the first charge, I try to use the use my car. I noticed that the auto start function doesn't work. So auto start meaning uh, if your car stops, then the car try to uh, the car will switch off the engine. Um, basically, try to make the whole process more efficient, so you won't burn battery, uh, burn um, petrol while the car is idle. So that's the function of auto start. But for the auto start to function, it requires the car battery to be more than seventy five percent. Uh, of charge, so without reaching that level, it's not possible. But I found it very strange because I already charged the battery. So when it reaches, when it, when the indicator indicates seven, that means the battery should be fully charged. But I don't know why. Um, for my first charge, the auto start function doesn't work. Um, so what I did the second time is I connect everything again instead of use, instead of using the default mode, I press the mode button and then I choose car and recon recondition mode. So in that case, what you will do, you would light up this this LED and that LED. That's the car and recon recondition. Um, and it starts the whole process again. And I just tried my car um, a few hours ago and all the start functions working. Uh, I was quite happy about the outcome. Okay, so that's how you, how you connect everything and start the charger. And let me just walk, walk you through, um, walk, walk you through the steps. Um, the first step, what they call, is desulfation. Desulfation. So you will detect sulfurated batteries. Pulsing current and voltage removes sulfates from the lead plates of the battery, restoring the battery capacity. So that's the first step. 
And then the second step is it tests if the battery can accept charge. This step prevents that charging proceeds with a defect battery. So if the battery is defect uh, is defected, that means the charge will not start will not start. So in that case, probably this indicator will light up. Okay. And the third step is bulk. So the bulk step provides majority of the charging. So you would charge the battery to 80% battery capacity. But as I said to you guys earlier, at least for Ford, the auto start function requires the battery to be at least 75% of charge. So if the battery does not have that level charge, um, the, the, the computer on the car will not, will not use the auto start function because the battery can also um, also needs to serve other functions. So you won't, tr um, basically the system prevent the battery to be, um, to be drained um, without other crucial functions. Um, and then step four, step four, once the battery reach, reaches 80%, then it might be very hard to charge the battery, charge, the, charge it fully. So what it does is it try to charge the battery by declining the current to maximize the level of charge to 100%. Okay. And after step four, the step five is to analyze the battery. You would test whether the, the battery can hold charge. If the battery cannot hold charge, that means the battery is, is faulty and you might need to replace the battery. Step six, uh, step six is the second attempt I did. Um, it recondition, conditions the battery. So what it means by recondi reconditioning is that the recon step voltage increases to create controlled gassing in the battery, in the battery. Gassing mixes the battery acid and gives back the energy to the battery. So I think what it does, it, this one try to increase the voltage. And by, by doing so, it creates um, some gas inside the battery. And that's, that's a mixture of gas and acid to give back the maybe the capacity of the battery. So that's step six. Step seven is um, basically once you reach step seven and this one will be green, all other LEDs are kind of like orange. So that means the battery should be able to use and step seven, it try to maintain the battery voltage at maximum level by providing a constant voltage charge. So you will still try to charge the battery by maintaining the battery at maximum voltage level. And step eight, step eight is, um, is maintaining the battery by sending pulse to the battery. So if it detects the level of charge um, to below 95%, then you would try to um, you would try to charge the battery by sending a pulse to it periodically, I guess. But um, this is the part that, that I don't understand. I noticed that while I use it, you would reach step seven, but I never experienced step eight. And also it's confusing because to my understanding, step seven and step eight are independent. So you can either do float or you can do pulse. So pulse meaning you will detect the level of the charge if it's below 95%, then you will send pulse to it to, to charge up. 
But for flows, that means you will maintain that level by constant, constant, char constantly charge the batteries. So I don't know how to select the two or how they are re how they are related. I might need to send an email to 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 their support to ask what's the different. Oh, sorry, how to use step eight. Um, yeah. So okay. Anyhow, um, once you reach step seven, so what you need to do, you need to unplug it and then remove the, the clamps from the battery. And that's the whole process of using this charger. Um, for, from my experience, I quite like it. I think um, using this charger is much better than jumpstart your car and then drive your car f for a long time just to charge the battery. I think that's a bit wasteful. So I'd rather, or in the future, I'd rather use this charger just to make sure my battery is fully charged. And, and also it's very important, if, if your battery is fully charged, that means when you operate your car, um, especially when your car have auto start function, your car should be more efficient than, than, than driving with a depleted um, lead acid battery. So I think this one is very useful um, for everybody with a car. Um, okay, that's the end of this video. So once I got a reply from them regarding step seven and step eight, I will give you guys an update. Okay, thanks guys for watching. See you.